Hello everyone. Welcome to the second episode of the 909 Hyatt build, where we will wrap up this project and finalize the Eurorack module. But without further ado, let's jump straight into the schematic diagram and have a look at the completed design. So if we start with the first page, on the left side here we have the trigger inputs and as you can see there are also buttons here for uh, triggering the sound. Up here we have uh, individual velocity inputs for uh, open and closed hi-hat. And over here we have a buffer circuit for that. This SR flip-flop is used for uh, converting the uh, individual trigger inputs into uh, open close uh, selection signal that is used by the rompler and for selecting the correct uh, velocity. And it's also used down here uh, for the envelope generator where we have uh, one, one mega ohm pot for the open high at decay and we have 100 kilo ohm pot for closed high at and um, if we select uh, open high at in that case this circuit is not engaged and we are using the one mega ohm and, and the C13 here as an RC circuit for the envelope generator. But if we switch to closed hi-hat, in that case, we will connect this uh, potentiometer in parallel with this one. And this one will, of course, uh, the 100k here will be dominant. So down here we have power supply, 5 volt for the logic and for the EEPROM. Here we have uh, a linear to logarithmic uh, converter that uh, is feeding the VCA, which is this transistor here. And we have a buffer circuit and here we have a low pass filter. And after that, the signal is routed through this buffer or amplifier stage before it uh, exits to the output jack. So if we look at the rompler, uh, we have a trigger input signal here that will reset both these counters, the 4040 and the 4520. The address counter is, of course, uh, connected to the ROM uh, address. And up here we have a buffer and uh, the outputs from them are connected to a resistor network here that is forming the, the output of the digital to analog converter. And uh, the resistor values here are normally 5k, 10k, 20k, 40k, 80k and 160k. But I have tried to uh, collect the values a little bit. Uh, so instead of having uh, uh, six different values, then we have only three different values. And here we have a DC blocker. And down here we have an interesting circuit. The most significant address line has a couple of OR gates made from discrete diodes. The purpose of this is to select the correct sample in the EEPROM, depending on if the Hyatt is open or closed. The Roland engineers did a clever thing here. Since the open Hyatt decay time is longer than the closed Hyatt, they allocated 24 kilobyte for the open Hyatt and 8 kilobyte for the closed Hyatt. Let me show that by loading a converted ROM image into Audacity and play it back. Before we can start the PCB layout, I need to figure out the form factor and where I should place the pots and the jacks. I would like to have a similar layout as the 1990 snare module, but the buttons will obviously not fit and there is no room for the jacks at the bottom, so it has to be bigger than 8 HP. In my triple play module I used 12 HP and that will fit everything, but I can probably shrink it down to 10 HP to save some space. So uh, I think I will go for that. So with the schematic design entered into KiCad, and the panel concepts worked out, the next step is to do the PCB layout. It looks like there is a lot of space on this board, but it turned out to be quite some work to get everything to fit around the EEPROM. I ordered the PCBs, and when they finally arrived, I started to hand solder the SMT parts first, starting with the semiconductors, and then moving on to capacitors, and finally the resistors. I ran into a small issue with the 4040. It turned out that I got two different packages in the same lot, 
but I only use one of those in this design. So there wasn't any problems to continue with the build. The eye bomb is a really great help here. I got so used to having it now, so it's hard to understand how I could assemble boards before. After a cleanup with IPA, it was time to solder all the through hole parts. It's the usual stuff 10 microfarad bulk capacitors, nearly power connectors, jacks, pots, and the Sherry MX keys. I opted for the more expensive IC socket with turned pins, since I don't want to have issues with uh, bad connections. I remember using cheap IC sockets in my first DIY computer back in the 80s. And the ICs creeped out of the socket due to mechanical and thermal stress. Sometimes the computer stopped working and I had to press the ICs back in the socket every now and then. Yeah, that was the good old days. The old vintage EEPROM is quite cool, but I prefer to have a less power hungry device. So I decided to use the Winbond EEPROM instead. I bought these on AliExpress. They were advertised as new old stock, but when I inserted them into the EEPROM program and I did a blank check, it was clear that these were used parts and that they were salvaged from some kind of embedded system, I think. Anyway. I had no problem to erase or reprogram them, so I'm happy with that. With the EEPROM, the power consumption on the plus 12 volt rail dropped from 90 mA to 15 mA. But when I tested the PCB, it turned out that I had made a couple of mistakes. I had connected a bias resistor to ground instead of plus 5 volt, and the tune pot worked the wrong way. It is interesting how I keep making these mistakes. When I draw the schematic, I'm 100% sure that it's correct, but when I bring up the board and the pot works the wrong way, it's obvious that it's wrong and I can clearly spot it when I look at the schematic. It's quite funny actually. Anyway, let's fix the layout and then we can take this module for a spin. Okay, so let's have a closer look at uh, this module. At the bottom here with the connectors we have the closed hi-hat and open hi-hat uh, trigger inputs. And we also have individual uh, accent or velocity inputs. And we have the output jack. And uh, if we start by looking at the range of the tune knob.
and we have the close tie at decay knob. And we have the open high at the cane knob. And with that, I want to thank you for watching. See you soon again. Goodbye.